Go jab, and close. just go nice and light, but we're just trying to get good range, good retraction on our hands, good re rotation into our punches, hands up, chin down, elbows pointed down. Just really light at range, without any footwork to start with. Off you go. And time. Very nice, everyone back over here please, Neil Cabot. So I have a um, defensive system that we'll maybe cover on the pads. But one of the rules is that shoulder replaces hand and stays there until the hand returns. So you are punching and your shoulder's up as your punch goes out. But then as your hand comes back, you drop the shoulder down in this space. That's when he's going to hit me with the cross. So as I jab and he slips to the outside, my shoulder stays up. That's good. But then as I start to come back, you're creating this space, which is going to bosh, cost you. And you're going to end up on the floor. So your shoulder stays up until your hand returns to your head. Does that make sense? Same on the cross, shoulder up until the hand returns to the head. So when we're doing that drill, your shoulder should hit you on the side of the jaw as you jab, <laughs> jab to jab, and then on the cross, yeah, same. Yeah. So shoulder hits, shoulder hits, shoulder hits. I should feel my shoulder hit the side of my face when I punch and it stays up until my hand returns. Off you go, last 10 seconds. You go left hook high, uh -huh. right hook low. Good. So on the low hook, obviously you want to bend your knees. I like a 90 degree angle on my hooks. Uh, people frequently hook long like this, and that means you're going to hit these smaller knuckles that are going to break. So a tight hook wants to be 90 degrees. There's three 90 degree angles on a hook. There's 90 degree turn of your foot. There's 90 degrees between your elbow and the floor, so that your shoulder is up protecting your jaw. And there's 90 degrees between your forearm and your chest, so that you don't do this or that. Okay? So three 90 degree angles. In front of your partner, a little bit closer, left hook high, right hook low, left hook high, right hook low, left hook high, right hook low, shoulder still hits the head, nice mechanics, rotate into your punches, off you go. Time, stick those two drills together, so you're going to go jab, cross and left hook high, uh, right hook low, off you go. Beginners aren't hitting each other yet, they're just hitting gloves. They're learning to be accurate, they're learning to work with a partner, build up their timing. Right? Makes sense? Let's do liver shots. So, uh, you can't really do uppercuts. If we do left uppercut, you can do this. Left uppercut. Oh, sorry. It feels weird. Like, like upwards and you're kind of <laughs> touching back of hand. <laughs> Not really what we do. So we're going to go with liver shot instead. So we both start in front of each other in our stance. We take a step out with our left foot, we bend our knees, we go liver shot. Boom! Oh, you got to hit me. Yeah, good. <laughs> now, we're going to triangle step. So my lead foot comes to my rear foot. I step forward with the right. He does the same. And then we go spleen shot, which is on the opposite side. Then we go back to stance. Okay, so we're just setting up the liver. If you try and hit, if uh, Neil tries to hit me from the liver shot from here without stepping, he opens up his jaw. So he wants to step offline. So that's missed. And then the liver shot goes underneath. Right? So you never want to be on the same line when you're throwing the liver shot. <coughs> so we're in our stance, we take a step out of our left foot, bend our knees, right shoulder goes forward, and then we liver shot same time. And for the young, tough dudes, you can whack each other if you want. See who drops first, go back to stance. Now, left foot comes to right foot, step forward with the right foot, 45 degrees, and then spleen shot, which is on the opposite side, back to stance. So we go out with the left, liver, triangle step, spleen, back to the left, liver, triangle step, Spleen, other hand is up all the time. Palm up, off you go please! <laughs> okay guys, let's get that triangle step sorted. Everyone behind me please, facing this way. So we all got our stance, please, hands up, chin down. We step out with our left foot, our right shoulder dips down to our left knee, like this, so we're slipping and rolling anything that's coming above. We go with the liver shot, right hand stays up. Okay, cool, return the stance. Now, my left foot comes back to my right foot, and then I step to the point of the triangle over here, bend my knees, left shoulder down to right, right uppercut, back, take a step back laterally, and then we're back in stance. Step out to the left, dip, liver shot, left foot to right foot, right foot steps forward on the 45, liver, uh, spleen shot, back to stance. Step out to the left, dip, liver, triangle step, spleen, step back. Carry on with your partners, please. You've got to keep the other hand up. Keep the other hand up, just in case they hook you. Five, four, three, two, 
one and time. Nice. Now you put the first three together. So you go jab, cross, left hook, right hook, liver shot, spleen shot. Off you go. Basic mechanics. Let's add in a little bit of head movement work. So we're both going to be in uh, front of each other. Neil's going to jab me. I'm going to jab him. We're both going to move our heads to the right at the same time. So the head. <laughs> so uh, the punch goes over our shoulder. Doesn't punch in the nipple again, please. So that's great. Stop. So we freeze. You should kind of meet bicep to bicep because you both slip the punch. Go back to square. Now we're both for a cross. We both move our head to the left. So we're both learning how to get our head offline. If my head stays in the centre, I get punched in the face. Make sense? So you go move your head to the right and to the left. So we're both aiming for each other, but then at the last second we just kind of slip our heads. This is a nice drill for beginners to teach them how to slip punches. Shoulder still stays up though. Off you go with your partner, please. Be careful. Nice. And time. Good. Shake out. Is everyone warmed up a bit? Good. Uh, Neil. So, shoulder rolls next. So these are like um, a series of drills that you do with gloves. I tend to work with beginners first with gloves on, then with pads, because they can't usually control their power, they're not very accurate, so I prefer to do glove work first, but it's up to you. It's good warm-up stuff for your class. So we're in front of each other, Neil throws his cross at my head, I'm going to shoulder roll away. Is everyone familiar with the shoulder roll? Tell me if you're not. Don't be shy. We don't really you don't look sure. We don't use it really. Yeah, it's as long as it's not, not, not the classic no, shoulder roll. No, no, no. Just, uh, so, a shoulder roll. <laughs> what's that? I just have a black guy. Shoulder roll is used when you've screwed up. I.e., my hand is out, I'm thinking about punching Neil in the stomach, and as I start to punch him in the stomach, he throws a cross at me, and that's my last ditch thing. Because my hand is already here, I can't get it back in time, punch. I'm going to get hit. So, I have to use what I've got out there, which is basically my shoulder. Aim for my face, please. So I just use my shoulder to deflect. Now the master of this is Mayweather, obviously. He's yeah. the king of shoulder rolls. So if you want to watch it at the highest levels, watch Mayweather. But it's still a useful tool for you to have when you screw up. You could, of course, bring this hand across, but then I've kind of blinded myself. I can't see the left hook coming, and then you get crap by that. So I prefer just to use my shoulder. So what we're going to do is, Neil's going to throw a cross at me. I'm going to shoulder roll. My left arm comes across my body to protect my body, just in case he changes the height of the punch. Okay. So I don't want to do this. This is not a good idea, because once again, I can't see the next punch, and I'm blinded, right? So left arm goes across the body. Right hand can go here, or when he punches me, it can go here, but I need to be able to see over the top of it. So I just prefer to glue it here. Your shoulder is going to do some of the work. Your head movement is going to do some of the work, and you rotate your lead foot. So we're going to go cross across. He crosses me. I shoulder roll, I cross him. He shoulder rolls, he crosses me. And we just get this little loop drill going. So we're just learning how to deal with the cross. Be accurate and hit your partner in the chin. If they don't, whoop, whoop, that's right. if they don't, <laughs> if they don't put it there, they're going to hit in the chin, nice and light. So turn away from the punch. This sets up all sorts of cool stuff. Okay, off you go. Shoulder roll, right hand. Hands up, chin down, left arm across the body. Okay, time. Some of you are catching the punch. That is acceptable. Can I break this? So when he punches me in the face, I can do this, but I want to be able to trust my shoulder. Punch me in the face. Oh. <laughs> punch me in the face. Good. Get faster, you can hit me. Good, Andy. So, go. I need to know that my shoulder can do the work if it's required. Right? My chin is down into my collarbone, so it's unlikely to get a chin, but I can deflect the punch just using my shoulder. So don't rely on this backhand, because this backhand can be waving to the crowd, or doing whatever, sending a text message, whatever you like. You can rely on your shoulder just to save you in that split second. So use your shoulder. Carry on, off you go. Right, Brian. Keep your eyes on your partner. So that's shoulder roll. Now we do hook roll, and then we'll put them together. So Neil's going to left hook me in the head. Now rather than just stay here and take it, especially because he hits hard, I know. Um, which means I get rocked. I'm going to roll a little bit away from the hook. So when he hits the hook, I'm just going to dip down a little bit and let it roll off my gloves. So I kind of let it deflect off. Rather than going like this, which does work, I go, oh no, it's new, hit me. So I just kind of roll. Then I throw a left hook back to him. I'm set then for my left hook. He kind of rolls away. He hooks me. So we just kind of let it deflect off. My hand is still up, but I'm just riding with the force rather than blocking the force. So a different type of concept, right? So he hooks me in the head. I bend my knees, I let it roll off. 
then I come back with a left hook. This is the hook roll drill. We're going to put the two drills together in a second. Off you go! Left hook to the head. Keep your right hand up, chin down. Let it back to the bottom. So now you're going to link the two together. We're going to start with the cross drill. So Neil cro uh, crosses me in the face, I shoulder I would go back and then he continues. Continue. At any point, either of us can go into the hook drill. Wait, oh, I gave it away. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh. <laughs> By slipping to the outside of the cross, Neil. So he throws across. <laughs> so we're shoulder rolling. I can slip his cross, then I'm into the hook drill, and then we go into the hook drill. At any point, I can come out of the hook drill by bobbing and weaving. Now, I'm not a bob and weaver. Are you a bob and weaver? No, I don't. No, I'm a snapbacker. Yeah. So when he hooks me in the head, I just snap back and look. He's set for the cross drill because he's missed his hook. He's missed his hook, so now he's off position. Pretty much all he's got is that shoulder because he's off position. So you mix the two drills by this. You start with a cross drill with your shoulder rolled across. Neil's going to slip to the outside of my cross and then for a left hook. I roll away from that. Then we're in the left hook drill. Either one of us now can snap back. Neil's going to snap back, wait for a new <laughs> and then for the cross, and then we're back in the cross drill. Okay, makes sense. Do you want to see it again? Yeah, one more time, please. Good man. So cross drill first. Get this going, get your rhythm going. Aim for each other's faces. Either one of us can slip to the outside of the cross when it's being thrown and then for a left hook. I cover it and we're into the hook drill. Either one of us can snap back, throw the cross, beat you to the middle. <laughs> yes! And then he throws the cross back and then we're back in the drill. Go really light. If you don't trust your partner, put gum shoot in. Ready? Up go! <laughs> so it's a one for one drill. One of us is doing one thing at one time. So we're both going cross this one for one. So it's one for one. One for one. Some of you are trying to do two at the same time, which doesn't matter as long as you've got your hands up, because the one who doesn't have their hands up gets knocked out, so it encourages you to keep your hands up. But it should be one for one, and then snap back, and then we're into a drill again. Now, if you're struggling with this, just one of you will do the defensive movement, the snap back or the slip. Okay? I'll be the one that does it. Neil's just going to be throwing cross to start with, and then when I'm comfortable, I'm like, mm, not yet, not yet, no, I'm scared, no, yep, okay, now. <laughs> I'm waiting, it's alright. Uh, yeah, that looks good. So you're then like leading it through soft, eh? Yeah, I'll be the one that does the defence and then continues with the drill. But if you've got it, you both need to be doing it because it's more like sparring. You don't know what's going to happen, right? But if you haven't got it, one for one, right? Off you go! <laughs> So, you can also bob and weave. I don't like bob and weaving. Uh, tall people tend not to like bob and weaving. Short people like bob and weaving. Who likes bob and weaving here? Short people. Yeah, I thought so. So, he's throwing the cross. Nice try. <laughs> I can bob and weave to be inside, then left hook. So I'm going inside of his cross. If my head happens to be this side of his cross, it doesn't make much head stop as the punch comes. Very sweaty glove there. It is very, yeah. <laughs> So as uh, he's punching me, it doesn't make sense for me to cross this line because uh, he's going to meet me, right? It makes more sense. Thanks. <laughs> it's a bit. <laughs> Took a while. Extra slow. Took a while. <laughs> so as he throws across, I go up and I go underneath here, then come up the other side, then went to the hook drill. Okay. So you can put me inside of a cross and come up the other side. One of the tips for more advanced people is when you put me to the inside of a cross, you want to give them a little bump so that they're off balance, so that they can easily come back. Because he's throwing a cross, so his next punch is likely to be a hook. So he can beat me to hook. Whereas if I bump with him, I give him a little bump, it just takes him off balance and then I can pull my hook. So that's a more experience. Second thing, when he's throwing the left hook drill, we're going left hook for left hook, I can obviously bump and weave here. And then come back in, give him a little bump, and then we're into the cross drill. So if you like bobbing and weaving, I don't, but if you do, add those in, off you go! Try not to get smacked in the face. <laughs> <laughs> Some half beats. So half beats are motions you halfway full through a full motion. For example, when we're going with a cross drill and we're shoulder rolling, I can liver shot then left hook. 
that for you, didn't it? <laughs> yeah. Instead of going straight into the slip hook drill, I'm going slip, liver shot, left hook, and then we carry on with the hook drill. Now, when I bob and weave, I can body hook him and then come back into the cross drill. So you, you can add in extra beats if you want to. Meaning, when he throws the cross, I can slip, hit him in the liver, then left hook, and then we carry on with the hook drill. And then when I bob and weave, I can take a step to the right foot, uh, body shot, and then work back into the cross drill. Then I can slip, liver shot, left hook, and went to this drill. Then I can bob and weave, body hook, cross, and then back into that drill. Do you want to try it? Yeah. yeah. Someone's going to lose an eye at some point. <laughs> <laughs> Off you go. Yay, hey, time! I don't trust you lot at all. Gum shields in. Gum shields in, you lot. Go on, all gum shields in, please. All right, let's just recap. Everyone over this side, please. So this is a what I call a give and take drill. You go one for one. It's also called ping pong. It's like hit the ball across one for one. Right? So. We're doing the uh, shoulder roll because it's your last ditch sort of defense against a cross. And then we're also doing the hook roll because maybe you've been hit and it's just kind of glancing off your glove. So you're learning how to roll with force. From that we can, cross please, slip to the outside. We can on the hook, snap back out of range. On the cross we can bob and weave to the inside, give them a little nudge. On the hook high we can bob and weave and move back. You can half beat when he crosses, liver shot, then into the hook drill. When he hooks, you can body hook and then into the cross drill. Then you just blend them together. Off you go, then we'll add him kicks. Oh. Yay. 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 Okay. That's the basic drill. There's a lot more. There's splitting. There's all sorts of craziness. But we'll stick with basics for the moment. Uh, now we're going to add in the kick. So we're going shoulder roll. Cross me in the face, please. Ah, good man. So shoulder roll. I throw across back. He shoulder rolls. So we get this going. What's a good kick to throw now? Here you are, man. Yeah, lead round those kick to the body. Low lead side kick to the thigh if you can. If he drops his hand like he keeps dropping them, hook kick to the head. For the safety of your partner, let's go round ice kick. They can be to the five, depending on your flexibility of the body, or to the head. So we're going shoulder roll cross, and we just don't put that hand there. Yeah, that's okay. We can do, but it's risky. And then at that point, I want to kick him during his opening of his punch, not the retraction of his punch. As he punches, I want to kick him now, rather than now, because his elbows return to a guard. You're going to kick an elbow, right? So you always want to kick an opening line. This is opening up, rather than a closing line because you've got more time. So it's a timing drill. Be nice and light to each other, because when you cross, you're all extended open, all those floating ribs are nice and easy to crack, so be careful with each other. So we go cross. Do you want to do it to me? Do not drop me. Yes. Because <laughs> the seminar's over. So I shoulder roll, lead leg, very nice kick, and then back. Uh, notice how I don't hold my arm out. Kick me. I'm tr still trying to get my elbow down. I don't give him false, like staying here for too long. I'm still doing this. So you've got to get the timing right. Cross. Kick me. Yes, carry on. My turn. <laughs> Off you go. Be careful with your partner. <laughs> Left arm across your body, right hand up. Right hand up. Oh. Right here. Back to your head. There you go. Chin down. Yay, time! Before these nutters break each other's ribs, let's move on to the next one. So. Uh, we're going with a hook drill, so he's going to hook me in the head. Mm, cheers. Okay, okay, okay. Well, guys, it's not very nice to your instructors. So, as I snap back, what's a good kick to throw? Because I'm just moving my head back, which balances my lean leg coming up and extending. Right? So you just use your front kick or your teeth. So we're going with a hook drill. Now I'm gonna, you're going to snap your head backwards. Front kick. I'd use my front leg because the weight's going to be on my back leg. As I go, whoa, hook, this is light. So you can just lift up. Be careful, once again, don't kick him in the groin. Left hook in the head. So, weight, nice and slow. Take your head backwards, front kick with the left leg. Good, without the shifting of the weight because that's time lost. Yeah, it's time lost. You just got to go, oh, lift. Okay, go. Snap your head back. A little bit shifty. Not bad. <laughs> Off you go. That's against the hook. There 
<laughs> now add those into the drill. So you got a lot going on. You have the base drill. So this is the base drill. This is just teaching the students to ride away from the force. Use their shoulder to deflect. You can use your forearm. You can use your elbow, but I'm just trying to teach them. The second drill, hook drill, is just learning how to block a hook, but not block it like this, where you get rocked more. Let the force roll off, and then you come back with your own hook. So learning how to ride with the force. Cool. So then if we go back to the cross drill, the way for me to get into the hook drill is to slip to the outside or weave to the inside then went to the hook drill. The way for me to get out of the hook drill is to snap back out the way or to bum weave underneath and then we're back in the cross drill. I can half beat, carry on, <laughs> where I hit him in the body then the left hook. I can half beat where I hit him in the body then right cross. When I shoulder roll I can roundhouse kick. I can hook kick if you have hook kicks. Go. When I go to the other drill I can snap back and front kick. Off you go, the whole lot. That's all I'm doing. That's all I'm doing. I'm not really enjoying it. I'm not really enjoying it. I'm not really enjoying it. And time! Everyone back over here. So you guys all experience martial arts as an instructor and it confused you slightly at points, right? So that is probably three to six months worth of lessons for your beginning students. And you can add in anything you like up there. You can add in split entries into knees and elbows and off balances and trips and sweeps and spins and all that. But that's just the basics. Make sense? So, some ideas to add to your classes from that? Yes, sir. Yeah, cool. cool. Have a drink of water. We'll carry on a little bit more on the gloves, then we'll get onto pads. The fun stuff. So, uh, there's a range of defenses you can do against jab, as you know, right? They start from, in my opinion, the worst defense all the way to the best defense. The worst defense is he punches me and I get hit. <laughs> but toughness is a defense. Like, if you're just tough and you can take a lot of physical abuse, that is a level of defense, not the best one, right? Second type of defense is to commit both arms to blocking. So both hands up on my head, chin down, and I just put the shields up and look through the gap. Third level of defense, single arm. Fourth level of defense, other arm. Okay, fifth level of defense, top of my head. So, uh, we don't need to do the first one when he punches you in the face. I assume you know that hurts, so you don't want to take some money with us. He gives me a jab, I go double pillar, single pillar, Single pillar, chin down, and then just let it kind of slide off my steady head. Sorry about that. <laughs> Don't wipe it on me. It's gross. And again, he gives me the jab. Two arms, he gives me the jab. One arm, he gives me the jab. The other arm, he gives me the jab. Top of my head. Oh, that's just like butter, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Does a hair and friction give you a What's that? Does a hair and friction? I think it does, yeah. Right. Who's that nice bar in the What's that? That's a shower cap going on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think it helps, definitely. Uh, definitely, you know, Vaseline obviously has an effect of making things slip off my head. Not that I have Vaseline in my head before I come here. That sounds really weird. But, you know, a bolt pen and a bit Vaseline slip. made things slippy, I like that down. <laughs> so here we go. So you don't get the uh, sweat on your face. Because I know it's important. Okay, he's going to punch you in the face. Sometimes you get hit, and toughness is just toughness. You just take the hit. Sometimes you commit both hands. I generally don't commit both hands off the jab because um, it's not a good idea, it's not a hard enough punch. If it was a hard cross, I might go and then have to do double arms, right? When he jabs, I can go with one arm, when he jabs, I can go with the other arm, or I can just tuck my head back. Off you go, please, be careful with your partner. Thank you very much. Nice and light, guys. Okay. So those are the worst options, because you take force, so when he punches me, I take force, I get knocked back, and especially if he's bigger than me, right, it bruises my arms, it slows down my punches, worst options. Second set of options, jabbing please, parry, catch, scoop, are the first three, okay, so he jabs me, parry offline, your parry should be like you're brushing a fly off your nose, not this which people frequently do. So, uh, jab me in the face. You guys are trying to help me out. Hit me in the face. Hit me in the face. Okay, so it's just enough to deflect it offline. Bing, and the other hand stays up. Don't do this. Because then the cross is coming and you get hit on the opposite side. So, 
just enough. Cool. Then what? Catch. So I just put the aim to my face. So I just put the glove in the way. Catch. I don't really like this because it obstructs my vision, and sometimes you can punch my own glove into my face, which is stupid. <laughs> and then the last one is to scoop. Scoop is used for opening up the line for that, or for setting up your kicks because you control his arm. So that's a semicircle with your wrist, not a full-on wax on, wax off. It's aim for my face. Go on. Whoa. Yeah. Do it. Go on, do it. Do it. Come on. So, number one, he punches me. Two pillars. Number two, one pillar. Three, four, five, six, seven. Off you go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Slightly better when he punches me, that, yeah, fish, when both, with both arms is to just tie up one arm in defense because one arm is defending, the other one could be hitting him back. Does that make sense? But of course, then one hand is busy. So the next ones, you're going to have to go slow because you're young and you're going to hit me. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so, I don't know. <laughs> ready, jabs. I'm going to slip to the outside. Both hands stay up. Unless you're hitting, you want both hands up because the cross will be coming next. So you need something there, right? I don't slip to the inside generally because I'm lining myself up with that. Next one, duff. Only if you're shorter than your partner. There's no point if you're taller than your partner to duff because there's so much head and body above the arm that by the time you get there, you get hit. So if you're short on your partner, you just go, and it goes over the top of your head. Last one, snap back or step back. Uh, my lips. <laughs> uh, if you're young, you can do this. Just use your back. If you're old, move your foot back rather than like mess up your back. So if you're young, most of you are young here, you can just lean back. Have you seen that video of the guy with the tie kick? And he leans back like 90 degrees. And yeah, that little guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, he was young. <laughs> <laughs> if you're old, you don't want to move both feet back, because if I move both feet back, then I have to move both feet back in, and you can intercept. I just use my back foot, because then I can fire back in and get into range. So my back foot moves, and then I'm back into range, and I haven't lost any space. Front foot stays where it is. So now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Off you go. Uh, so better because when he punches me, I can move my head offline and now I can punch. However, I'm allowing him to hit me and maybe I'm not throwing back, which is too passive. So the highest level is destruction. Um, so when he jabs me, I guide his fist onto my elbow. When he jabs me, I guide his fist onto my elbow. Ideally, I want elbow contact with little knuckles and that would break his hand. Even through a glove. The harder he punch really hard. No, don't. don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So even through a glove, especially knackered old gloves like those, going on, you'll, you'll feel the elbow point go in. Right? So it's a... Uh, it's a bit higher than a normal block, but you're just trying to jam that up with the elbow. I can guide it on a little bit with the other hand. Next one. He jabs me, I like this one. Hook to the bicep. Rather than, uh, as traditionally taught, like with the punch me, with the knuckles like this, I just do a left hook, and then that opens up his face. See what it did for his arm? Hook. So as he jabs, I move my head to the right, and again, hit me. Hit me. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you want. My elbow's up in case he throws the cross. There's something in the way, then I can think. Right. Next one, hammer. So usually done with a split like this, so that my head's offline, and I want to get into clinch and start kneeing. Okay, I don't hammer with my head here, because the cross is coming, so I go like this. I put something in the way, and move my head off to the side, and then I can grab this, knee him, or kick him in the head. Next one, uh, you like that head kick, right? <laughs> so you split, and then go head kick. Like that. Be careful. Uh, you're not going to do this one because it's dangerous. He punches me. Well, I pop his elbow. I put my left hand on his wrist, right hand on his elbow, and I just go like that. It's not an arm lock, although that's cool. That won't work. So I just do a quick little pop. Do not do that. It's dangerous. Last one I never do unless I'm doing it with a beginner, which is I pull his hand into my knee and kick him. I only do that at the beginning of the season, you only get away with it in the beginning. <laughs> Usually good people will just punch you or laugh at you.
So that's right hand to the glove, right knee, and as it hits, I just extend and get rid of it. Okay, so last one. He jabs me, left elbow, he jabs me, right elbow, he left, jabs me, I hook, hammer to the knee. Don't do that one. <laughs> Keep this left hand on the jab cross. I was taught traditionally like this, but that seems a bit silly. So right hand, right knee. Keep that left hand. Off you go, that's the last ball. So, wall off the jab, he jabs me, put my left elbow in the way. Sometimes it doesn't land and it just slides off. Not a problem, I haven't been punched in the face. He punches me, right elbow in the way. Next one, slip to the right, left hook to the bicep. You really want to whack that as hard as you can. It's so much fun. His arm goes, oh no. <laughs> Dead and it opens him up. So, young guys, just crack it as hard as you can. Slip to the side, bang, and see if you can knock their arm out. <laughs> Next one, I salute and hammer. As I salute and hammer, I switch my head off because I know the cross is coming. This sets up this, or this, to the body. Last one, pull it down, front kick, back to stance. Five, off you go. Okay, great. So now, obviously, no one's going to jab 15 times in a row, in which case, you need to have like a web because something's going to seriously wrong. But some of these you're going to like and they're going to work for you, some of those are just junk and not going to work for you. That's fine. You take the ones you like and you throw away the ones you don't like. So we're going to go free for free. He's going to give me free jabs. When you're ready. <laughs> and then I'll give him three jabs nice and slow like that. So he can decide which ones he wants to do. It's his choice. Cool, he jabs me. So now I can mix them up. Oh, shot. Uh, I'm going to break your arm. Okay, so free for free. Some of them you just automatically go, oh, that's cool, that works. And some of them are too fiddly, so you don't use those. That's why I show 15. Because in this group there'll be people who like something like that. So free for free now, off you go, and then we'll have a little break. Okay, so that's some glove drills you could do with students, you know, uh, progressions and options and things you could do. Make sense? Yes. Uh,